All right, um, this is crazy. Like, this is crazy because they just came out with these images. I, I don't know. Let's just say it was like four or five images from the movie. They were really good images, you know? Uh, it looked like they were setting this movie up to be pretty awesome. It was taking place, I believe, in um, um, a, a prison or, or jail, something like that. And I guess the collector is in there. And havoc ensues, and, and it gets it gets crazy. Um, but yeah, and then a few days later, or no, a few days ago, we found out that um, they put the kibosh on it. And not only that, but this thing was um, they shot eight days back in 2019, and you know before COVID, and so then after COVID. They, you know, they were shut down. Production was shut down, which is kind of weird too, because um, a lot of stuff still shot during COVID. You know, we all know like Tom Cruise was shooting Mission Impossible during COVID. You know, they were just following the safety guidelines. But uh, yeah, so it's the whole situation is kind of strange, and and um, Marcus Dunstan, you know, he he stated that uh, the, the the producer would not and will not return their uh their emails their calls the guy just i don't know i don't know what's going on i mean i don't want to speak out of turn for the producer maybe he's got his reasoning but it's crazy so um let's go down and read this real quick and then we'll talk about the the actual collector franchise and why uh it's a viable franchise that should keep going um, l- let me go over here and let's scroll down and see what we got. Okay. So collector three may not happen. Leaving trilogy incomplete. Uh, the collected, the third movie in the collector film series may never happen. Leaving the trilogy unfinished written by feast collaborators, Marcus Dunstan and Patrick Melton and helmed by Dunstan. The collector was initially pitched as a prequel to James Wan and Lee Wanell's saw films under the title the midnight man see i didn't know that that's actually pretty interesting so this was literally originally pitched as a prequel to saw wow that that could have been interesting but i'm glad they didn't okay i'm glad they didn't um but when the producers turned down the offer the horror movie became a franchise on its own spanning two films the collector which premiered in 2009 and its sequel the collection uh, released in 2012. While both the movies were lambasted by critics, I don't get that at all. I, you know, I always, I always say to the, say to that like uh, it seems like uh, not all, but a lot of I guess you could call them highbrow critics don't really have their finger on the pulse of horror. You know, that's just my opinion. I I, I feel like horror seems to always get a bad run when it comes to uh, critics. Which is funny because I'm, I'm, I guess I'm a critic now, <laughs> but I'm trying to change that though. Okay, I'm trying to be on the good side of it and, and give uh, horror the credit that is due. Okay. Uh, anyway, while both the movies were lambasted by critics, uh, particularly for their displays of gore and tasteless nudity, they performed. What isn't that what horror fans like? They performed decently at the box office and amassed a cult following. Uh, that regarded the titular serial killer as a horror icon. I and that's a question for you guys. Do you think the collector is a horror icon? I do. I, I definitely think he's a horror icon. Uh, and just in two movies, uh, he he definitely has this air of mystery about him. You know, it's cool that we never see his mask. There's mask. We never see his face, and he is dangerous. Like he might be one of the most dangerous killers out there because he's very good at what he does. You know, it's, it's like, that's his skill. Uh, you know, he has a, um, a particular skill set that he has mastered, you know? Um, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's, so, um, Marcus Dunstan and Patrick Melton, they did an interview with Sean Clark a few days ago. And I watched, I watched a good portion of it. Um, and I was going to take you guys to a couple of the things that they were talking about. Matter of fact, I made some notes here so I can know the timestamps to go to. 
And then with the third one, there was only one advantage to the third one and it's kind of nowness and that it's been so many years that we've graduated as humans from the characters of one and two were folks aspiring. They wanted something invested in this movie that thinks it's happening. Wouldn't they like to know what's happening? Cause I would. Yeah. I mean, we, we actually, we yeah. stopped, we stopped shooting in 2019. That was two years ago. And we only shot eight days. So we're not, we have very little really shot. Anything that's been released has been from that time period. Yeah. And um, yeah, here's the images. no plans to start shooting it. I mean, we haven't talked to anyone who was in the production for months. All calls and emails have gone unanswered. So it's, it, and and we, we, we'd love to finish it, but like, sure. I don't know. It's not, we're not the producers, so we don't know. So it, speaking it, of Halloween 3, it's like, I was finally working with Tom Atkins and he was bringing it. Mm-hmm. Finish a Tom Atkins role. I want my friend Josh, who's been there since the beginning. I That's want Evan Patrick, who's been there since the beginning. And this collector and like the new actors that have come in and Navi Rawat from Feast. Yeah. Everybody showed up to bring it. And our first week of shooting was all finale. So, like, we know the intensity we were capturing. Is there a trailer or a teaser? Yeah, there's a teaser. It's been done for a long time. But it needs color time, music rights, and some VFX. And you can't get anyone on the phone and you don't hear anything. So yeah. it's, at this point, I'd say I'm really pissed off. It's it's just crazy. It's just crazy. The, I mean, I don't want to say bullshit. Like I said, I don't want to speak out of turn yet. But, I mean, the producer, the ball has been in his court for so long. And nothing. Just nothing. It's it, and, and I don't think I've ever heard of a case like this in Hollywood where... You know, the, I mean, that's just not that professional, if you ask me. You know, I mean, you're a producer, so you have to have a, a certain sense of uh, professionalism when you're dealing with these things. But to just cop out and say nothing, it's just, I don't know, that's just bad business, you know? It's just really bad business. I'm hoping that because of this, maybe the producer will speak up. But the, the crazy thing is the rights are you know in the producer's court so patrick melton and marcus dunkson they don't really have a pot to piss in at the moment and it's sad because they're the ones that created this franchise they're the ones that came up with the characters all this stuff but somehow and probably because of money the rights ended up in the producer's court and it's sad because this is a guy uh, and again, I don't want to speak out of turn, but this is a guy that sounds like he just doesn't give a shit about the property at all, you know? And thats I think that's the case, too, in Hollywood. We, the higher up the rung you go and the more money is on the table, um, you get a lot of these guys that they don't care about these low-budget horror movies, you know? They're, they're not the priority whatsoever. And, uh, and that producer might have 10 other projects that he's working on right now, but say something. You know, reach out to the guys, let them know, hey guys, we can't do this right now, but maybe I give you the rights back, you buy them back from me or something like that. Because I guarantee you that the fans, if it's a question of money, I think the fans could make it happen. I really, I I think if Mark, Marcus Dunstan, Patrick Melton said, hey guys, I hate to do this, but the ball's in your court. If you love the collector, if you want this franchise to come back, we need X amount of dollars, you know? Uh, maybe start up an Indiegogo, something like that. I think they could raise it. I really do. Now, and and I'd like feedback from you guys. Do you think that's a, a really bad idea? Do you think they could get their, their money from another pot? I don't know. I'm just throwing out different ideas, but it's sad that we won't have the collected. It's sad that eight days were shot and um, Patrick Melton brought up a good point there. It's been two years. So what do you do? Do you pick up production again two years later and your characters look different? Because let me tell you, they will look different. You know? I mean, look at a photo of yourself two years ago. You you could probably notice some differences. Maybe not too too much. They might be able to get away with it. But, I mean, to get every single character in the story... To look exactly like they did two years ago, not an easy feat. Not an easy feat at all. You know? So, 
it's just a sad situation all the way around. It, I think what would have to happen is they'd have to just go ahead and start restart production again, you know, to avoid that hurdle. I, I think eventually it'll creep its head back up. I think eventually we're going to have the collected. I think, but I think they're going to have to re reshoot. You know, I think they're going to have to just completely reshoot everything. They did eight days, eight days for a horror movie. That's probably a quarter of your, your movie. Cause most horror movies take a month. If they're, if they're on the scale of something like that, the collected, <clears throat> cause I mean, Halloween kills was shot in a month. So they're probably a quarter of the way done, you know, but man, the footage looked promising too. 